We are now proceeding to a seminal um, session on stage, topical on account of both the proficiency of the panelists who are joining us and on account of the gravity of the subject under consideration. We are getting the stage ready for a uh, an engaging brainstorming session. This is going to be an animated presentation of ideas. This is going to be brainstorming with the with a stellar lineup, I must say. Kal kare so aaj kal, aaj kar, aaj kare so ab pal mein parle hoi ni. To bahuri karega kab. I think one of the most oft quoted dohas would be this. Kal nahi, aaj nahi, jo bhi karna hai, abhi karna hai. Ab am kal ke liye kar rahe. So this is going to be a moment to. Sit together and prepare a road map for future on the topic Vision Kerala, a giant leap to potential. To jointly moderate this session, may we have two charismatic members of Thai, I would say past presidents of Thai, Mr. Ajit Mupan, Chairman MN Holdings, and the immediate past president of Thai Kerala. Hearty welcome to you, and Mr. Rajesh Nair. Associate Partner, Ernst & Young LLP and also Past President, Thai Kerala. May we request you both to come up on stage and catalyze the conversations to prove. And our panelists, Honorable Minister Shri P. Raji will be joining us in a bit. And we would now like to invite Shri Gigi Thompson, IAS, former Chief Secretary, Government of Kerala. Welcome, sir. Mr. V.K. Matthews, Executive Chairman, the IBS Group. Gracious welcome to you as well. Mr. Dhruv Sharma, Senior Economist, World Bank. And Dr. Balakrishna Menon, Advisor, Fragility, Conflicts and Violence Department, World Bank, Washington, D.C. Both of them will be joining us online and sharing their perspectives, giving their insights. This is a session where we all put our brains together and come up with a solid plan to help the state realize its true potential. Mr. Ajit Mupan and Mr. Rajesh Nair will be leading the session. Our objective is to sit together and come up with a plan for development Identify niche areas that require attention. Uh, design means by which those areas, those issues or gaps can be addressed and then come up with a plan. That is the immediate plan. So, Ajit sir, may I leave the floor to you? Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, the Honourable Minister is just on the, he just called me. He is just finished another program, he's running late. Uh, Soon be here. Uh, Sri Vicky Matthews, Sri Gigi Thompson, Sri Rajesh Nair, my fellow moderator, uh, dear past presidents of Thai Kerala, fellow CMs, fellow charter members, and uh, dear friends. Thank you, MC Mira, for a nice uh, invitation. Thank you, President. Anisha and uh, convener Damodar, uh, chairman of Taikon, for giving me and uh, Rajesh this opportunity to co moderate this important session with the distinguished panelists. I'm pleased to welcome all the distinguished panelists uh, and at once thank each one of you sparing valuable time to participate in this important session for the future, to discuss the future of our state. Uh, I apologize for omission. Uh, two eminent panelists have joined us online. Uh, Shri Dhruv Sharma and Dr. Balagishan, my good, dear friend. Uh, they are, they've joined the session online. Uh, so, you see the title, uh, Jain Leap. Why Jain Leap? Neil Armstrong. The first human being to step on the moon famously said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. All of us here have many things we 
proud about Kerala, apart from our rich culture and heritage. Our high HDI, high per capita GDP, a vibrant startup ecosystem rank, ranked fourth in the global ranking by GSER. Number one ESG ranking by Niti Ayo, to quote a few. The Made in Kerala industry has its share of achievements. The three spice flavor companies, or the audio recent companies, have 70% of the global market share. Cochin Shipyard Limited built a modern aircraft, aircraft carrier indigenously, applauded by the whole world. Our citizens have adorned apex positions of President of India and Chief Justice of India. Our healthcare professionals have won much appreciation world over. Malayalam cinema is much sought after, even by Bollywood, that it's been dubbed and uh, reproduced in other languages. Our scientists in ISRO have played lead role in successful launches of uh, SLV satellites, uh, Mars mission, etc. Government of Kerala has rolled out many policy reforms and regulations to speak a few, K-SWIFT, statutory agreements, free drizzle mechanism, unified inspection regime, private industrial estates, etc. Honorable Minister is yet to join, but I applaud his uh, initiative to interact with the industry reps, industry association reps, and take feedback prior to policy formulation. The first meeting was on sixth day after taking charge. Yet, despite all these positives, our economy is faring far below its potential. When I say potential, the human potential, human capital. There are many underlying concerns and apprehensions we see widely in the news today. The brain drain due to migration of youth to Canada, US, Australia, and New Zealand, even from well to do families. Our, that our state is turning into an old age home, this lack of self-sufficiency self in food, the infrastructure of public mobility and waste management does not augur well for high quality talent, to attract the high quality talent much desired for the high tech industries. The perception of, the legacy perception of business unfriendliness continues to some extent. A social culture of obstruction to public infrastructure projects, be it seaport, airport, highways, or gas pipelines, is a, an issue, a, 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 a thorn in the flesh kind of issue. There's a fear of dwindling remittances from oil economies with the shifting trend of, uh, to green energy sources. So, what is holding us back? Is it a lack of a co coherent long-term vision and aligning of policies and initiatives to the vision? Or have we set our aspirations too low? Or is, is it that the bureaucracy is falling short in execution, especially in the lower runs? Is it governance issues, lack of digitization? Is it our cultural baggage of protest or obstruction mindset? Is a lack of sufficient uh, non-tax revenues in our budgeting. Maybe a combination of few or other. So the endeavor here is to bring the stakeholders together to explore what is holding us back and what can propel us to take the to take the giant leap to true to our potential of our people. We start with defining our long-term vision an attempt to agree on the outlines of a long-term vision, perhaps in qualitative and quantitative terms. For example, uh, a best place to live and work, the cleanest state in uh, India, uh, or the largest economy in India, perhaps, in terms of SGDP. Identify the key initiatives to attain the vision, and identify the binding constraints that hold us back, 
and how to measures to overcome. Now, ideally, an exercise of this uh, nature will require at least a full day workshop. If the outcomes from the sessions are found useful by the stakeholders, by the policy makers, Tai Kerala will be happy to take this exercise forward in a larger format. As a moderator, let me lay some ground rules. I wish to underline that this discussion will be collective, constructive, and positive. Deliberations at macro level. We will stay away from micro issues or grievances or any criticism. This is a collective joint effort. We can speak in a mix of English or Malayalam. There's a limitation of time. Therefore, I request the, the, the support staff and the MC to give us a chime alert. Each one of us, uh, uh, when, when we have the uh, round of discussions, let's uh, each panelist, uh, I request, distinguished panelist, to you know, perhaps limit uh, each intervention to a time of three minutes. We have a chime alert for that. And uh, our uh, sub-segment of discussions, like we have the uh, vision setting, we have the initiatives, then we have the part three is of the binding constraints and how to overcome. So each sub-segment, you know, we'll have a uh, uh, alert of a buzzer. Uh, so we have, uh, unfortunately, our, uh, the leader of opposition had, uh, you know, uh, early this morning, you know, I received a regret from him. Uh, so if the minister will be joining in a few minutes. So, but anyway, let's get on with the session. We have, we are running delayed. Uh, uh, President and the chairman of uh, Taekwondo has informed me that we should uh, proceed with the session. So, uh, I just wish to introduce our uh, panelists from World Bank, and uh, who will they will the flow of the presentation will be uh, the, they will start with the presentation. And then we will get into the rounds of uh, panel discussion. So, sorry, just a moment. Yeah, so we have Dr. Balakrishna Menon, advisor, fragility, conflicts, and violence, Department World Bank, Washington, D.C. Balakrishna Menon is uh, advice. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he was the state coordinator for Kerala World Bank State Partnership, which is to led which led to billion dollar plus uh, multilateral and bilateral investment in Kerala. Uh, this came in the aftermath of the big flood and the you know rising uh, the the natural disaster, which which uh, the calamity. He has also served as a program leader for sustainable development in Middle East and North African region as lead specialist uh, across several regions. Bala is a doctorate holder in public policy and public finance from Harvard University. Let's give a round of applause. <laughs> then we have his colleague uh, Thru Sharma, senior economist of World Bank. So, Thru is a senior economist for World Bank in the India Macroeconomics Trade and Investment Team. His work covers macroeconomic uh, policy anal analysis and modeling, growth analysis, climate change economics, and uh, policy reform based lending operations. Before his posting in India, Thru was based in World Bank Indonesia's team in Jakarta very focused on macroeconomic policies and uh, technical advisory program in the Ministry of Finance uh, Fiscal Policy Agency. <coughs> Through received his BA, BA, uh, Bachelor in Economic Honors from, and PhD from the University of Sydney. So, over to you, Zruf, who will join us online now with this presentation. And then I hope and uh, uh, look forward to a very engaging and interactive session. 
uh, after the uh, panel discussion, we'll have a Q&A and, &A, and uh, then we have a sum up. So for the Q&A, as you all know, as the MC will be announcing, you please use the WhatsApp uh, code uh, to QR code to air your questions and will be curated by my co-moderator Rajesh Nair. And uh, then uh, I will be introducing the other panelists as we move along to the, the uh, panel discussion. Thank you so much. Um, what, what, what I'll do is I'll share my screen. I have some, I've put down some thoughts and ideas about uh, some, of the, uh, uh, some of the issues that um, Ajit raised in his opening remarks. And I hope these will be helpful in guiding uh, some of the discussion, uh, perhaps in a provocative way, perhaps in a, uh, uh, you know, a challenging way too. Or, uh, you know, a, um, uh, sessions like this, uh, especially um, when we think about uh, potential, the economics and so on, are always a contest of ideas and it's, it's, it's great to have this opportunity. So I'll just put up on the screen um, my uh, uh, presentation and uh, let, me, let me begin. Um, um, <clears throat> You know, uh, we, 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 what, we, uh, what, we, what we're sort of covering today, and, and, and this touches upon some of the sessions that uh, were preceded this one as well, um, uh, about, uh, you know, the long story short here is about what, what can Kerala do to unlock the great potential that it has. Um, we're all very familiar with the, uh, Kerala's success. It's, it's quite well known, or at least, <coughs> excuse me, it's perceived to be quite well known. Um, high income, uh, growth driven by tourism and hospitality, uh, um, uh, top performer in, in many indices of human development, uh, very highly educated uh, uh, population, um, and at the same time, um, uh, you know, uh, Kerala does fa face some, some challenges when it comes to an aging uh, workforce, um, some room for improvement when it comes to uh, regulatory environment, uh, export preparedness, innovation, um, and, 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 and a large diaspora, uh, a famous diaspora, um, um, that can perhaps uh, be tapped into when it comes to, to helping uh, uh, Kerala define its vision and also to um, uh, reach and implement some of the actions that might come about uh, as a result of um, uh, uh, you know, uh, creating a, a, a vision for Kerala's future. Um, each one of these things, uh, each one of these issues, uh, I, I'll raise very briefly. Um, uh, and, and, and in order to provide some context, um, uh, we'll, we'll have uh, some other states uh, um, presented as well, and we'll see where Kerala is and, and what Ke Kerala can do to perhaps. Um, uh, continue and build upon its strength, or catch up where there are room for where, where there is room for improvement. Now, when we think about um, uh, uh, you know building a, a foundation for for unlocking potential for for unleashing growth, I've ca characterized this into four distinct categories here: um, uh, human capital, investment, innovation, and institutions. Again, this isn't anything um, uh, that's 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 new, uh, but but what this framework allows us to do is to really drill down into some of the areas uh, where uh, opportunities exist and where challenges are currently holding back uh, uh, the state of care. Uh, so let me start with um, the first one, which is human capital. Um, of course, we all know that human capital is, is critical for, for uh, economic growth uh, along with um, uh, you know, if I put my sort of academic hat on, uh, capital and labor are the two basic drivers of economic growth. And what what uh, uh, countries, states do with a combination of both capital and labor is is critical um, uh, in achieving higher incomes, um, uh, in achieving uh, growth, uh, uh, from fostering businesses. One of the challenges that Kerala has. And, and I present this, uh, as I said, in context with some of the other large states in India, uh, is that it does have a high old age dependency. And this, of course, is projected to, to uh, increase over the next decade or so. 
Again, nothing, uh, nothing uh, uh, groundbreaking here. We're all aware of this, but when you place it in context with other uh, states, it, it presents a picture of where, where the, the extent of the challenge that Kerala is currently facing. At the same time, um, the opportunity Kerala has is to tap into one of the healthiest and most educated population groups in the entire country. Um, despite old age, despite uh, 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 some of the challenges that we're seeing with um, uh, you know, Kerala's youth leaving, it is still one of the most educated um, populations in India, uh, uh, by some margin in, in most cases. So when it comes to thinking about opportunities on the, um, on the human capital side, this is where uh, I think um, uh, today's conversation could, could touch upon because uh, you know the, uh, we all know that the um, uh, retirement age in Kerala is 55. Uh, 55 um, might seem a long way for, for younger generations, but it's it's you're at your peak. Uh, you know between the ages of 45 and 65, so you have a large proportion of the population whose expertise can be, uh, still be leveraged. Now, if I go uh, uh, to to investment. Um, uh, you know, both of uh, investment in key areas, key sectors, entrepreneurship are all needed for, uh, to, to bolster growth um, alongside human capital. Um, uh, combining both of these is, is, is a critical element. Now, Kerala has, uh, uh, you know, does receive, um, uh, a fa uh, 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 well, does put a lot in investment, but again, when you compare Kerala relative to other large states, um, investment uh, it is is still a relatively low share. It's only about one and a half percent of the state's um, um, gross domestic product. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, attracting uh, investment, uh, getting financing uh, from uh, outside, uh, Kerala again has plenty of opportunity uh, to improve where uh, where it is currently. You can see that um, compared to some of these other uh, large states. Um, Kerala can attract more um, foreign capital. Now, uh, as I said, um, at the same time you have um, uh, at the same time you have challenges. You also have opportunities. Now, where Kerala can leverage an opportunity, and I mentioned this uh, just a minute ago, is the the um, large diaspora that it has. Um, remittances uh, uh, are an important part uh, of Kerala's growth story and um, how to leverage those uh, remittances, how to use them uh, to generate productive um, outcomes is, is something worth considering, um, especially given wh where Kerala stands among some of the largest uh, states uh, uh, in India. Just under 10% of um, uh, GSTP um, uh, is in the form of, um, uh, is the share of remittances. Um, how you can use these funds will be critical as, as um, you have a declining population, a uh, declining working age population, so, uh, sorry. Now let me quickly turn to innovation. Uh, I, I'm rushing through some of these ideas because um, uh, you know, the, 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 the plan here is to set up a, a framework for discussion and come up with some creative ideas. Um, you have human capital, you have investment, um, but when you are thinking about uh, uh, moving the uh, uh, growth frontier, um, when you have limitations on human capital, when you have limitations on investment, what moves that frontier? It's, it's innovation. And, 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 and uh, you know, this, this forum and discussions of the past couple of days are, are a, a perfect, uh, 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 you know, uh, scenario for, for coming up with um, some ideas in this space. Kerala uh, has a challenge uh, when you compare Kerala to um, many other states. Um, there's some room for improvement when you think of innovation as a whole. Uh, um, uh, you know, the best performing states uh, uh, in, in India have, um, ha have, have moved ahead of Kerala in some respect. But when you break down where the, where the opportunities are in Kerala, um, again, a, a familiar story about Kerala's human capital being highly educated. Um, you have an opportunity to leverage that. Um, the business environment is also quite conducive. Um, again, so you have um, a, a well-educated population, uh, a business environment that in absolute terms is, is, is doing okay. Um, so these 
to, 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 to try and capture um, uh, the, the benefits that can be reaped from um, uh, leveraging both of these is something that we need to think about, something that we need to discuss. At the same time, uh, you can see that when it comes to uh, uh, where the challenges are, if you break up some of these, uh, um, uh, some of these categories, um, overall investment I've just, uh, I've just mentioned. Um, um, Kerala has, Kerala's growth story, its development story has traditionally relied on low-skilled, um, relatively low-skilled workers in tourism and, and hospitality. When it comes to Kerala moving up the value chain for, for growth uh, to be driven by um, another part of services that's more high value add, this is um, uh, basically the IT and business services. This is something that Kerala can, can work on when it thinks about where it would like to be in 10, 15 years time. Now let me quickly turn to institutions. All of these three ingredients that we've just discussed that go into the, the growth matrix of course rely on institutions and enabling policy environment, having the adequate social and physical infrastructure to, be, to, to, to enable that potential to be realized. Now in some respects um, uh, uh, there is room for Kerala again to uh, improve. Um, uh, you know, Kerala has an opportunity to, to move just beyond tourism to think about other exports as well. Uh, and, and again, this is not a story that's new, but placing it in, in, in context of other states and, and, and um, in India gives you a sense of where, how much room there is for Kerala to improve. Finally, let me come to the opportunity that Kerala has. When it comes to physical infrastructure, and Ajit mentioned social infrastructure a little while ago, um, that can be a part of the discussion, but when it comes to physical connectivities, um, Kerala is doing quite well. But how to leverage this? When, it, when you think about logistics, transaction costs, these aren't um, being fully capitalized despite the fact that um, um, Kerala is high, you know, has very good digital connectivity and physical connectivity as well. I know I've covered a lot in, in the last uh, uh, eight, nine minutes, but I'm hoping that this uh, provides the context for, for what's to follow. So, um, Ajit, I'm just going to pause here and, and, and hand back uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. So, let's get on to the panel discussion. Before that, let me uh, do the... Let me do the, uh, even though uh, the distinguished panelists here need no introduction, uh, but let me do the you know, formality anyway. Uh, Mr. V.K. Matthews, founder and executive chairman of uh, IBS Group, our own uh, charter member. He's a visionary entrepreneur. He's an alumnus of IIT Kanpur and Harvard Business School. Uh, Mr. V.K. Matthews initially uh, headed the IT division of Emirates Airline Group in uh, Dubai. And then he ventured into entrepreneurship. IBS Software was born in 1997 with 55 experienced uh, staff. 25 years and seven strategic uh, global acquisitions later, IBS Software is today one of the most successful travel technology companies in the world, serving over 200 clients. Welcome, sir. <laughs> so, just to update the minister, we just had a presentation from the World Bank uh, senior economist, uh, Dr. Sutil Sharma. Uh, Dr. Balagrishnan is also on the screen. They are joined online. Um, now we just starting the first round of uh, panel discussion, and that is introducing Mr. Matthews. So, uh, as I said, 25 years since seven strategic global acquisitions later, it was the, one of the most successful travel technology companies in the world, employing about 3,500 professionals in 30 nationalities. Blackstone, the world's largest private company, is an in, uh, uh, investment, equity, equity investment company, is an investor in IBS software. And uh, I I'm also proud to say that, you know, probably uh, one of the most prominent but yet uncelebrated unicorn, travel tech unicorn in, the, in, the, in, in Kerala. <laughs> so, 
Honorable Minister is here. He also doesn't need any introduction, but again. So, Sri P. Rajiv currently serves as the Minister for Industries, Law and Choir in the Government of Kerala. He represents Kalamashiri constituency in Kerala Legislative Assembly. He was a member of Parliament Rajya Sabha from 2009 to 2015. He was a practicing lawyer in High Court of Kerala before taking full-time politics in organization uh, responsibilities. Uh, two notable features, one I already you know, covered in my uh, in our, uh, context setting opening remarks. The uh, initiative to engage with the industry and take feedback is a remarkable feature. Uh, I remember during my term as uh, you know, president you know, it was of Thai Kerala in 2020, as soon as he took charge, it was six days of you know, taking charge of the first online you know, interface with uh, all the industry association leaders. And now uh, is spearheading a, to, uh, initiative to, for job uh, creation in the state targeting to start one lakh MSME enterprises in 2022. So let's give a big hand to the <laughs> Sri Gigi Thompson, IS and uh, uh, Chief, uh, former Chief Secretary of uh, Government of Kerala, 2016. Sri Gigi Thompson belongs to 1980 batch of IS. He was a collector of uh, of uh, Muhachubra and Alapura, and then district collector of uh, Palakkad. He was principal secretary to many government departments like revenue, investment, promotion, higher education, uh, Norca, etc. And uh, he then served as the 39th chief secretary of the state of Kerala in January 2015 onwards. I stand corrected. January 2015 onwards. Je ladies and gentlemen, just give a big hand to. So, we are on to our uh, first round of discussion, which is an attempt to define uh, the vision, a long term vision for the state in qualitative and quantitative terms. I request each panelist, and we, we have decided uh, to speak in a you know, mix of uh, English and Malayalam uh, as per the mix of our audience. Uh, so I would request each one of the distinguished panelists to take at least two, define in two, two quantitative terms and two qualitative terms. So I said, raise an example uh, earlier, as you know, the, probably the cleanest state in uh, India would be a, one example. But you don't need any examples, but let's, let's kick off this. I request the uh, Honorable Minister to kindly start. Thank you, Majid Mopan and distinguished panelists, dear friends. Actually, I would like to congratulate Thai for convening this brainstorming session on Vision Kerala. Actually, we have published our draft uh, industrial policy 2022. Our theme is Nature, People, Industry. Normally, industry developments, industry employments, no, needs are first, people second, then industry. We got the suggestions and opinion from Thai also. Thank you for your inputs. Uh, I would like to take this time to present my own case. Because nobody is in state of Kerala to present our own case. Everybody is busy with their WhatsApp to propagating the negative news and they are busy to translate in all languages of the world. <laughs> but Kerala is the first state in the country which we have legislated, which has taken a legislative step to make smooth functioning of MSMEs. We have passed a omnibus legislation. Anybody can start an industry if the Investment limit is up to 50 crores of rupees without any licenses for three years. Kerala is the first state in the country which have passed a legislation to establish a statutory grievance address mechanism with powers 
to penalize the government officials for their lapses has anybody told about this to you did you get any opportunity to read a single sentence in our media with regard to this all of you got the viral message of uh, that is happened in wynard this nesto group okay you got it yes what has anybody told you that issue has been settled and they has re ready to invest 650 crores in the state of kerala and they have started their first unit as per their commitment has anybody told about you no all of you got the viral messages through social media about what has happened in takadi village mall okay and you got it that's that it yesterday i was there to inaugurate the same mall has anybody told about you this is the reality kerala is well known for their advantages in human development indexes particularly the strong infrastructure the health infrastructure education infrastructure a uh, child mortality rate uh, and life expectancy it is well aware and well known to the world but nobody knows about the advantages in this sector kerala has the first airport of the world which is fully operated by solar energy it is not only operated by solar energy but it produces more energy and the carbon credit of cr of this year more than 3 crores of rupees and kerala is the first state in the country which has built the first indigenous aircraft carrier csn kerala is the state which has built the first fully automated electric barge of the world make in kerala make in india okay but made in kerala the first part is well ever to all but second part is not well propagated Kerala has a company which has produced 30 percentage of the olive oil resin consumed by the world population. Kerala has produced more than 60-70 percentage of the olive oil resin which has consumed by the world population. Kerala is the global hub of spice processing. All global leaders of spice processing from this state, Kerala, our own state. Has anybody told about you? Any news hour is discussing about this? Yes. Now you are coming. <laughs> Thank you. I am speaking this last one year, and thanks to the organisation, Thai, CIA, Fiki, they are also uh, joining hands with the government to propagate in these things. I had meetings with all these uh, all the representatives of this organisation. I met with more than thousand investors in the state of Kerala. and during pandemic all of us who got affected by covid has tested for d dimer test the kerala company has developed the consumable for this test and it has produced the same thing and got patent he told me in 3 minutes but i need more time to propagate this nobody is here to propagate all these things you are always uh, saying the negative things these things has happened that this thing has happened kerala is not ready then uh, sorry for the limitation of time few days back i read a newspaper report in in malayalam daily the investment in the state of kerala is very less compared to other southern states how can you compare i am the owner of a land of 10 acres investment is 10 crores of rupees ajit mopan is an owner of a land of 10, 1 acre with an investment of 2 crore of rupees which is bigger my 10 crore or his 2 crore how can you compare comparison there is a in the, there is a tool in the statistics that is ratio the same report there is a ratio what is the ratio we have gone through the rbi reports kerala investment per acre 1.95 crores of rupees tamil nadu 3.5 crores of rupees is yes, bigger than kerala that is true karnataka 1.62 per acre which is bigger karnataka's investment or kerala's investment if you are taking only the data then karnataka but you cannot taking it is ideally you cannot compare one with another 
for comparing there should be a tool that is ratio telangana investment per acre 1.28 andhra 1.66 which is bigger kerala is number 2 if the investment per acre in southern state this is a comparison scientific comparison if you are going to the factories per acre the same thing you can see number of factories in kerala 0.2 per square kilometer tamil nadu 0.29 per square kilometer karnataka 0.073 per square kilometer telangana 0.13 per square per square kilometer andhra pradesh 0.10 per square kilometer thai is known about this well we we'll, we started with you know all the positive attributes of kerala and i uh, clearly you know My said the question is very objective how can you compare taking only the rate uh, the quantum of investment kerala is the land which consists only 1.1 percentage of the country yes but all of you are aware of some such as small small news some of our friends who are started here with a small investment and grown like a big business magnet they are very busy to propagating taking searching all negative news in their own dailies and propagating through um, whatsapp special team is working for that but have you heard any any time in your life what has happened in this uh, in telangana one general manager has showed that he is showed that by the workers agitation why the workers agitation ap rayons yes anybody has anybody told about you no in bangalore iphone company lost more than 450 crores of rupees by the attack by this agitating workers and other forces not a single news of discussion in karnataka not a single news of discussion in any other parts of the country not a single news in any newspaper but if some small issue has happened in state of kerala then it should be viral what has happened in tamil nadu what has happened in maruti plant in uh, guragum delhi near up then i take this opportunity to present my own case the brand kerala today is a happiest day uh, ajit mopan has stated that we have started a campaign and observing this financial year as a year of enterprises our target is 1 lakh enterprises in this financial year itself the annual registration of msme is in kerala is 10000 the last financial year 17250 new msme has been re- have been registered in state of kerala but today we have completed 8 months completing 8 months and 3 days the statistics is 97418 new msme is registered in state of kerala with an investment of 6030.76 crores of rupees not from our side from our own state and the significant feature 2 lakh 12000 617 employment is is created generated recently in our neighbor state has entered into mou with the three uh, big giants of the world for 1.25 lakhs of investment but the expected employment generation is only 75000 then you all should take time to propagate sometime at this sometime while you are passing all negative news at least one positive news for kerala in your social media platform thank you thank you very much thank you sir thank you so i i would like to underline that the objective of this exercise nobody wants here to criticize kerala we are we know kerala is doing well in so many sectors you know i i covered it all in our open i mean my opening remarks uh, but the but we could do our potential is to do far better so how to do that that is the premise on which we are engaging you know uh, we can set a vision or you know we can set the initiatives identify the initiatives what is holding us back and all in a constructive and positive uh, nature only if this is not a forum for criticizing or discussing micro issues or uh, any grievances i made it very clear and this is the endeavor 
to, to work together with all the stakeholders working together with the government, how we can build the brand, brand Kerala. Okay, so I request uh, VK to uh, kindly, you know, take uh, on to the defining the vision in quantitative and qualitative terms. Good afternoon, uh, Ms. Rajiv, my fellow panelists, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Um, great pleasure and privilege for me to participate in this one. I flew through the night, uh, did not have a, a good night's sleep. So uh, I may not be entirely cohesive, so you please bear with me. Um, Mr. Rajiv uh, has talked about so many positive things happening in the state and so also we have heard from uh, the World Bank experts the positives of the state. If you look at the vision for the state, uh, I would say, uh, though Minister mentioned in his document, nature, people, industry, but the outcome of all of that, that means a protected nature, nurtured nature, and people, human capital, uh, and the industry working together, the outcome should be that Kerala should be the finest place to live and work. And I would like to relate this to something that's actually happening in the world. Uh, I've been traveling extensively and like nobody's business after COVID, and I wish COVID continued for some more time so that I could have slept and in the same bed for longer. Um, there are only two countries that I've seen where the people are so optimistic and with a lot of positivity. One is India, the other one is UAE, which I consider as an extension of India. Everywhere else, there is signs of uh, depression, gloom and doom because of the geopolitical issues and the macroeconomic issues that we are currently facing. I would put the vision of Kerala in connection with what's happening in the world, which was summarized by the CEO of McKinsey six weeks back in September. He said, it is not the decade for India, it is the century for India. And why he said that, he had three lead indicators to say that. And I will add one more. The number one, India is the talent factory for the world. And India will become the most important talent factory for the world in the next 25 years. We will be 20% of the entire world's skilled talent and high-end talent by 2047, which is true. And there is no that is science, because if you just extrapolate how the world population is moving, is this true? The second, the geopolitical tensions that we see today around the world, including the trade frictions between China and the US and Russia, Ukrainian issues, and all of the issues, if you take the supply chain is really getting remapped from where it is existing today predominantly, China, and that remapping, India can be a big benefactor. That's the second. And the third, for the size and complexity and all of the issues of India, India is one of the most highly digitized countries, so development can leapfrog. And that's really, we can see, all of the initiatives that's actually coming. And the fourth that I would add, and that's my own, I think the thriving mindset of the Indians and the ever hopefulness of our people will make India again a formidable economy in the coming years. So that is the backdrop, and then we have to really connect that with the vision for Kerala. And I would put it this way, the finest place to live, if it's a good place to live, I'm sure it will be a great place to work to, and it should be the place to work from. Work from Kerala in the context of the, the century becoming that of India's would be a fantastic opportunity. But it will be working from Kerala in, 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 the, in the new uh, age because 25% of all of the jobs in the world is going to be virtual or from remote. 
and we can be that place. But if we have to be that place, then obviously it has to be a great place for people to live and we have actually inspired people to come or continue to live here and come to this place. So I'll come to what it takes to making Kerala a, the finest place. The quantitative measurable two things. One, by 2030, if Kerala is the cleanest place, that means, like what Jaws would say, our backwaters will become swimmable, our streams will be clean, and we will have waste processed properly, scientifically, and managed, if we can. And we should also add, at least we should have two cities in the state, in the top ten clean cities in the country, which we don't today. We don't figure in the top 20 cities in, we used to be, Trivandrum used to be the cleanest city once upon a time, but we are no longer. So if we can add, and the second one, that is the, on the clean Kerala part, the second one, if we can say Kerala is the safest place, safest place, when I say safe, safe to travel roads, efficient roads, safe to drink water, safe to eat food and safety from disasters. Today, 12 people die on our roads every day. We have 112 road accidents per day and 12 people die every day. So if we can actually improve that, that, that would be the quantitative measure. The qualitative vision, I would say, is the finest place to live and work from Kerala. Thank you. Thank you, Vikram. Uh, we can, the uh, eminent uh, economist from the World Bank has given us some talking points. So I would encourage the uh, panelists to also draw upon from their you know, points, or we can also add the, your own uh, points, please. Sri Gigi Thompson, please, let's hear from you. Honorable Minister, fellow panelists, and my dear friends, after listening to the spirited defense by the Honorable Minister, I really felt that Kerala is God's own country. But the God is on vacation right now. Uh, and uh, I don't know, you will ask, uh, where, is he where is he doing his vacation? It could be in New Zealand or some other place. Anyway, I don't know. Friends, uh, you know, there is one Malayalam song that uh, is on the lips of every other Malayali. You know, that is Maveli Nadu Vanidum Kalam. Manusha illa ru monnu vole, kallu milla, chadiyu milla, erlo la milla, poli pajana. If you ask me, what is your vision of Kerala? I want this to happen in Kerala. I know it is a, it is a very difficult uh, proposition, but I would also, along with uh, this, I will also add one more line: kallu milla, chadiyu milla, inarthe, hartaalu milla, bandhu milla, endu gudi chala. I would request the Honorable Minister, you know, he is a very good friend of mine, I have got great hopes on this, yeah, this gentleman and I am sure uh, he will be able to deliver goods. But I will, I will very uh, yeah, politely tell him not to be carried away by the statistics. You know, statistics is uh, uh, truth. No, no, it's lie, utter lie and statistics. So don't be carried away by statistics. You know, you see, we can always say that uh, things are, a uh, lot of things are happening, improving and all that. Uh, but then the mindset of the Malayali is always to find something negative. I know uh, once a Malayali was invited to uh, a, uh, a friend's house, there was, he was having his uh, housewarming ceremony. He went around the house, he couldn't find anything wrong in the house. It was so beautiful. But then at the end he said, oh my God, how difficult it will be to uh, you know, demolish this building. <laughs> so this is the mindset. So we always find something wrong. I don't want to say something good about Mr. Raji. I will always try to find, okay, if you are doing this, you are going to do this. What do you mean? This is a Malayali mindset. That's why we have a great deal. We have to do a lot of work in the future. We have to do a lot of work in the future. Friends, now coming to the year. student of economics, so definitely I would say the, one of the most important requirements is to have a, uh, a, a sensible, dependable, uh, you know, fiscal management. 
the, right now the fiscal position in Kerala is not uh, encouraging. So there is an immediate need to rectify the mistakes. What I meant is the fiscal policies that neglect resource mobilization on the one side and fixed fiscal extravaganza on the other side needs to be corrected. Without this, it's not possible to bring in, uh, uh, you know, any kind of uh, uh, change. Uh, of course, may I know that my time is running out. Uh, I would say, now you ask for the quantitative, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, requirements. I would say that, you know, Kerala should aim at a growth of 6% on an average, 6% uh, growth rate uh, throughout. If Annual at, GDP growth of yeah. 6%. Uh, and if you look at the last uh, five, eight years, it has always been less than 4%. So this is something which we need to rectify. That is one thing. And regarding the fiscal situation, maybe if time permits, I will tell you a little later. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Shijiji Thompson. <laughs> so, we are covering this in three parts. The first is, you know, trying to define the vision, I mean, you know, in the, within the limits, constraints of time, you know, in the quantitative and qualitative terms. And then we discuss the initiatives required to get attained that. And then on the third part, we'll come to the binding constraints, which where we will cover the mindset, perhaps as part of that, you know. So this is the way we can uh, go about it. So uh, we'll get to the initiative side of it and uh, with the permission of Honorable Minister, can I go in the order of, can I start with uh, Sir Wiki Matthews? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, very interesting discussions. There is a, there are, there are two quotes I would like to, to recite here. One, um, we have to get the facts right, then we can distort the way we want. This is Mark Twain's. And the second one, is, I don't know who has said this, uh, but if you don't know where we are, no map will help us. So I would like to actually, and this is, I am one person who is very bullish about our country and our state. All the time, and I also tell everyone that there is no point in being negative under any circumstances. So uh, even in, in, but I think it's important for us to know the real situation that our state is. I'll say that in pure economic terms. If you look at the flows of economics, the flow of capital, the flow of people, goods and services, and flow of intangibles. And then you look at where you stand. Today, if I really look at the flow of people, let's look at the number one. We have about 3.4 million people living outside and going. And we have 3, 35,000 students every year going outside the country for education. And we do have migrant labor of about 31.5 million this time. And the projected size of that in 2025 is 4.5 million or 45 lakhs. And by 2030, it is going to be 6, 6 million or 60 lakhs, which is almost one-sixth of our population. And if you look at this migration or this churn, and if you look at, this is a lead measure, a place where, which attracts the brightest of minds is the place which is going to actually progress because they contribute to the economic development. In our case, the people who are coming, unfortunately, are at the lowest end of the value chain, and the people who migrate out are the people who are at the highest end of the value chain. That's one. That's the migration or the flow of people. The second, the flow of capital. 2019 till 2022, the cumulative FDA of the country is $142 billion. Kerala received 0 0.6 billion or 600 billion or 0.42%. Even in per capita terms, it's pretty low. So that's the flow of capital. And the third one, very important, the flow of goods and services. According to the GST figures available, we are a net importer of colossal deficit. We import from our neighboring states 1.5 lakh crores worth of 1.5 lakh crores 
over 1.5 trillion rupees worth of goods and services and we export from internally we export about 50,000 crores that is one third and if I take out the central government PSUs which is Cochin refinery, FACT and all of them then our export or our trade deficit is similar to that of very undeveloped places. This is a reality, an absolute reality. And this is balanced by our remittances, which is consistently declining. Last year, it was 72,000 crores. So that difference is managed by this. So this is about the flow of goods and services. Now, the reality of our economic status and the reality is important for us to know where we are so that we can fix it and we must fix it. So the reality is that we are 12th when it comes to per capita income of the country, 12th. And the, the growth rate, GSDP growth rate is even more, 17th. We were last year in nominal terms 6.6 .6, and in fixed price terms it's much less. But our neighboring countries, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, all about 10%. This is a reality. So it's very important for us to know what, what's really happening for us to fix the problem. As I said, the reason why I'm saying is you know, to, to sound negative, but I think it's important for us to know where we are so that the map can help us. The map and the leadership the government is taking will help us only if we know where exactly we are. I will talk about how to fix it to get to the vision in the next round. Thank you. Uh, it was uh, Tolstoy who said in Anna Karenina that every, all happy families are alike and all unhappy families are unhappy in its own way. You know, so here you see like failure is actually very, very easy. You just make one mistake and you're finished. <coughs> and to become a high income economy that we require certain important things to do. There are some seven distinctive features of all uh, economies which have passed from, uh, you know, a, a to the high income level. Now, I will list out. Number one, high savings and high investment. Second, in-depth industrialization. Third, large scale exports by the manufacturing industry. Fourth, high human development index value. Fifth, stable macro economy. Sixth, stable political situation. And seventh, lower degree of inequality. If you look at these uh, features, Kerala is doing reasonably well in some of these, but in certain sectors, there is still uh, you know, uh, uh, lots of things to be done, lots of improvements have to be done. And now, you know, see, like to uh, uh, achieve this, um, since I'm a bureaucrat, uh, I would say that one, one of the most important requirements is good governance. And what do you mean by good governance? Good governance is understood as openness, transparency, participation, accountability, uh, practicality, effectiveness and regulation flexibility. It requires political will and sustained commitment. You know, I, I, will, I, have, uh, I will just give you one example, which is just sir, for, the, for the information of the Honorable Minister and all others who are present there. Punjab is now coming out with a very beautiful, very excellent, very en encouraging experiment. It is called uh, the uh, 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 Punjab Good Governance Fellowship Program. So what happens is here is you know, it's a unique collaboration with the state and ISB, Indian School of Business. So what they are doing is they are taking over 50 professionals uh, and uh, they will be hired and they will be placed across districts, municipal corporations and departments. ISB being the knowledge partner, they will invest in their capacity development. It is an incredible opportunity to drive social impact. This is something which we can also do. 
during Rajiv Gandhi's time, you know, there was uh, there was an experiment which he uh, initiated. Like uh, we IS officers were asked to, uh, you know, sit along with entrepreneurs, uh, uh, CEOs of private enterprises, and exchange ideas. It was a wonderful session because you know, see, like when we are in government, we feel that we are the ultimate. And so when I sit with uh, VK Matthews, I know what is his problem, and he also will understand what my problems are. You know how difficult it is to get things done in government. So uh, when both of us exchange ideas, we get it. We, we can come out with uh, some kind of uh, uh, ideas. So see, there are lots and lots of things that needs to be done. I don't know. I don't have the time to tell you all this, uh, but I can tell you that lots of improvements, uh, you know, are possible. Uh, like as I said, if uh, we have uh, the vision, we have the commitment. And we also know what to do next. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I want to bounce off a couple of uh, ideas of you in terms of since you are the most experienced bureaucrat here. Uh, so allow me one minute just. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in terms of you know the governance, you know, and you have had the commendable experience as the chief secretary, former chief secretary of uh, state. Uh, how do we inculcate the uh, meritocracy in our <laughs> bureaucracy? You know the. How do we re reward and rec you know, uh, have a recognition mechanism to per have this you know, kind of competitiveness or the commitments, you know, competence going down the run? You know? Perhaps that is found lacking most of the time. Is it that or is it the digitization which will bring in more effectiveness and efficiency? Please let us hear from you. For I, take, I request you take you know, conclude in one or two minutes at the most. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, you see, like, uh, I forgot to say that, you know, in this great vision of us uh, that Kerala will become a God's own country. You know, see, I, when I say that, you know, I, I, I expect the state, a state, a state of affairs when there are no, there is no reservation on caste basis. There should be only reservation for merit. Unfortunately, this doesn't happen in our uh, our country. I know I'm sh I know it's so difficult for the honourable minister to uh, say this. Tomorrow he will be thrown out of his uh, job if he comments anything about this. So it will be very difficult. But, but mind you, time has come to, uh, to acknowledge merit. You know, people who have competed, there is no substitute for competence and experience. And you know, you see like today, you know, what is happening, you know, you see like uh, uh, the, the bureaucracy has to be very, very dynamic. You know, because the bureaucrats are the people who implement the policy decisions of the, of the elected representatives. So if the bureaucracy is designed, how is it possible to get things done? No, is it, just imagine that, uh, you know, see like I, uh, there are so many issues which, I, which, which we are seeing. You see, like Honorable Minister mentioned about the, uh, you know, the, the great achievements and all that. All, it's all uh, accepted, but one incident in, in Kedakambala, another incident in Mutut, or in another incident which is, which is happening in uh, Vidinjam right now. This is enough to spoil the good image of the government. It is, it is enough to spoil all the good work which has been done by the uh, Honorable Minister and his colleagues. So now it is very important that we handle all this in a very uh, systematic manner, in a very effective manner and for which you require uh, uh, a very, uh, you know, uh, you know, a very, uh, what, what shall I say, very, uh, you know, very, nalla, nalla nayam chaduriyam idhan undavana. The undavata undani prashangal undavana. Other one, definitely you require uh, uh, some changes in this. So, the uh, thank you. Thank meritocracy you. Thank you. is something which has to be, uh, you know, implemented. Thank you, sir. Honorable Mr. But let me, sir, I want to reiterate, we are all on the same side. <laughs> we are trying to see. <laughs> <laughs> How to <laughs> and we'll have a better vision for Kerala and how to work together as stakeholders, you know. Uh, so we will not are uh, putting you on the defensive at all here, you know. That is not the idea. <laughs> I know this is a you. Uh, I am considering Thai and other organizations are integral part of the government for implementing the policies. One. So, sir, uh, I, uh, sorry, I, meant, I forgot to mention, uh, we didn't have that uh, vision from you. If you have, you know, anything on that side, please, uh, you can mention and then also how, how to get there. Couple of initiatives. Actually, my vision is already in public domain. That is, vision document 2021, industrial policy. This is first time in the state we have uh, published the draft policy. 
and seeking the suggestions from the general public and the organization and stakeholders. Let's give a big hand to the amazing. That was a very big deep dive approach, which is hitherto unseen. You know, uh, definitely we all appreciate. That. And I think we can uh, finalize the policy in the coming days, and I hope I can uh, lay the document in the coming session of the legislative assembly. Then it should be the document of the house itself. Then it represents the perspective of the society as a whole. Uh, Mr. Tom Matthews has mentioned about work from Kerala. I am happy because I have noted this idea one year back in Thai conference at Leberi, no, Mary. The conference work from Kerala. This is the good base. Recently we were in Norway. To mediate the death of the UAE in the hotel. Where are you staying? That is an important thing for a state. If you are staying in a uh, hotel, C grade, D grade, that affects the image of the place where you are representing. So, we are meeting in the book, connecting in the book. But I don't know what I am You should go to Davos for economic form. Big experts, I think. But I learn both, and all of the other states are going. <laughs> this is the reality. And one from Kerala recently, I had an intervention with IBM after the opening campus here. Then I said, oh, if you are there working in America, after completing a program or writing a program, they may be frustrated, tense, because their parents are in Kerala. Our kind of program is in concentration. Then I said, you can write one or two or three programs you can do that things in Kerala. If you are working in some other states of the country, after a hectic work schedule, you are thinking to eat porota and beef, then the tension is started. It is not a problem, at any time you can start your bike or car and go anywhere and eat porota, beef, whatever you need. Depends upon your choice. That is the advantage of the state of Kerala. Beauty. In Norway, you cannot see the sun. Come to Kerala. Work here. You can do all work from here. A beautiful place. The concept of development. Second point, I am fully agree with the views represented by Mr. Matthews uh, with regard to the commodities sold in the state of Kerala. Before stepping into this campaign, we had a very good homework. Uh, is 1.5 lakhs as per our uh, analysis 1.9 lakhs crores of rupees in the southern angle Kerala till Wilkins in the reverse 10,000 around 10,000 crores of rupees automobiles and spare parts but interesting factor we have 44 rivets rainy state 260 crores of bottled water from outside of the states Garments, Kerala Tivikananda. Here there is the same food uh, items. Tell them you can know. I answer Jana, uh, what are the possibilities? I know what a project reports are not there. I can. About the uh, criticism is very relevant. We should address collectively. Again, I'm going to give it up the name. Cheap labor? No, we cannot. But at the high level, oh, Industrial Revolution 4.0, yes, AI, robotics, machine learning, blockchain. Namalani in the local to the Baksha and Idavate and I am American number of blockchain training for the 27,000 people. Blockchain training. I be able to We have completed 10 years. Recently, one of the chief ministers was there, your function. I 25 years. IBM, cognizant, one point. 2 lakh square feet of Uday Kuchi. TCS in the building, Mupata Rekari started their construction in Kakanad. 60 percentage of TC Tata Alexis workforce are here in Kerala now. At that, I have not aware of that company. Within 80 days, we have handed over the plot in uh, this furnished uh, space for Vinishwar. Over as 1 lakh clients in the one my clients. I think you can infosystem over there. 
വൺ ലാക്ക് ക്ലയൻസ് ഉണ്ട് സിനിമ മുതൽ എല്ലാത്തിനും ഉണ്ട് അവരിപ്പോൾ ഇവിടെ ഓപ്പൺ ഇത് മുന്നൂറ് മലയാളികൾ കോട്ടക്കെട്ടിട്ട് ദർ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വർക്ക് വിത്തിൻ എയ്റ്റി ഡേയ്സ് അപ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് നല്ലൊരു സ്ഥിതി ഉണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ഇതാ പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ എവിടെ നമുക്ക് ഫോക്കസ് ചെയ്യാൻ വഴി കേരള ഇസ് ഓഫ് ഫസ്റ്റ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് വിറ്റ് ഹാസ് യൂസ് ദ വേ ഇ എസ് ടി ഇൻ ദ കൺട്രി ഇ എസ് ടി ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ ബ്യൂറോക്രാറ്റ്സ് വിളിച്ചിട്ട് ആദ്യം ഇ എസ് ടി പറഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ അവർ പിറ്റേ ദിവസം വരാൻ പോകും ആ മനസ്സിലായില്ല അതിന് ശേഷം പിറ്റേ ദിവസം വന്നപ്പോൾ ഒരു നോട്ടായിട്ട് വന്നു ബ്യൂറോക്രസി ജി ജി തോമസൺ മിസ്റ്റർ ജി ജി തോമസൺ പറഞ്ഞ അത് പ്രധാന ഹട്ടലാണ് ഒരു ദേവസ്യായിട്ട് തന്നെ പോകും വായിച്ചില്ലേ ഒരു ചീഫ് സെക്രട്ടറി എഴുതി വിട്ടതാണ് വെച്ചാൽ ആ മണി അടിച്ചു എന്നുവെച്ചാൽ ദേവസ്യ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞൊരാൾ അവിടെ ആകെ മഴയൊക്കെ വന്നപ്പോൾ കൃഷി പ്രശ്നമായി നെല്ല് സംഭരിക്കാൻ പറഞ്ഞു കളക്ടർ പറഞ്ഞു നിങ്ങൾ കോളിറ്റി നോക്കട്ടെ സംഭരിച്ചോളം പോകും ഈ പാവപ്പെട്ടം കടക്ക് വാങ്ങി സംഭരിച്ചു പിന്നെ പറഞ്ഞ ആളും ഇല്ല കേട്ട ആളും ഇല്ല അവസാനം അത് അന്നത്തെ മന്ത്രിസഭയൊക്കെ ഇടപെട്ട് ക്യാബിനറ്റിൽ വയ്ക്കാൻ തീരുമാനിച്ചിട്ട് മൂന്ന് കൊണ്ടേ ഒരു ചീഫ് സെക്രട്ടറി അത് തിരിച്ചു വിട്ട് അവസാനം ഇപ്പം ഞങ്ങൾ ഇടപെട്ട് ഒരു കോടി പത്ത് ലക്ഷം പ്രതിരോധം കൊടുത്തു പിന്നെ ഐ നോട്ട് ഷെയറിംഗ് ദ വ്യൂസ് വിച്ച് യു ഹാവ് എക്സ്പ്രസ് വിത്ത് റിഗാർഡ് ടു ദ റിസർവേഷൻ ഐ ടോട്ടലി അഗെൻസ്റ്റ് യുവർ വ്യൂസ് ഇഫ് ആർ ട്രൈൻ ടു സെലക്ട് ദ ഹയർ ഓഫീഷ്യൽസ് ഓപ്പൺ ഹൗ മെനി ഫ്രം ദ ഷെഡ്യൂൾ കാസ്റ്റ് ഇഫ് ആർ സെർച്ചിംഗ് ഫോർ ദ സ്വീപ്സ് ലാസ്റ്റ് ഗ്രേഡ് സർവൻസ് സിക്സ്റ്റി ഓർ സെവൻറ്റി പെർസെൻറ്റ് ഫ്രം ഷെഡ്യൂൾ കാസ്റ്റ് വൈ Yes, yes. That is why it should be continued. Now, we have an empty post. You have an open eye. Anybody, did you get from scheduled cast or OBC? Very difficult. Yes, maybe in Kerala. But what about outside Kerala? I am totally against your views on with regard to this revision. What is your objective? My vision is that my vision One lakh enterprises guide that. I think it may be 1.25 or 1.3 uh, in this financial aid itself. Then scaling up at least 1,000 to 100 crores turnover companies. 1,000 crores turnover companies means 1 lakh crores of rupees turnover companies in the state itself. 1 lakh, 1,000 companies is a very microscopic percentage of the existing MSMEs below 1.5, below 0.3 percentage. we are trying for that and also we are trying to make kerala as the destination of est investment of the country thank you sir thank you very much for your views we may differ in some of the views that is my you know it's not to agree on everything so we we'll, i think for the paucity of time we'll have just one last quick round and here i would like we request the distinguished panelists to focus on on a one binding constraint that it could be you know qualitative or quantitative you know even the mindset or you know the cultural baggage whatever you call it so and 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 any remedy you you have for it one or two minutes at the maximum i request you to abide by the time so we can close the session and go to sum up and we have some closing remarks from dr balakrishna who's waiting in spite of the you know uh, a very uh, adverse time in washington just look at his commitment let's give it a give him a big hand it's 2:30 a.m. in washington so Uh, all right so uh, i request we keep the please please start okay this is the last round what's the con- you know binding constraint and wh- how we can overcome uh, again i'm going to be very open and earnest and very sincere so i could sound controversial but pardon me in my view looking at where we stand today and looking at the all the advancements which the state made in the early stages which we have not been able to capitalize during the last 2 3 decades you know governments one after another i believe that we have probably the best of citizens in this state i believe that our parties are better our politics is better but the way in which we conduct our politics the political model that we follow need to be reformed for example, for example today in our state the all of the political parties and that's true not only in india but world over their primary objective is to come to power or stay in power very important unless you have the wall you cannot draw the picture we fully appreciate and understand but the method which is a proven method in kerala probably the most stable method in the country 
We have a proven method. We have left LDF and UDF continue alternately. This time, as I record, the uh, LDF is continuing second term. But the approach that the parties use is, in my view, is disruptive, if not counterproductive or destructive. For example, parties promote a public sector mindset and a, mind, and, and a government mindset whereby these people are going to be the flag bearers or the sound and the visual voice of the dog. Now, all of it is about communication. You are communicating to the citizens that we have better programs or we are a better party, better leadership, or the other party is inferior. For this communication, we have disruptions in, 19, in 2017, we are 121 hartals. All of the hartals are effective only when citizens are disrupted. And in the name of the citizens, we conduct hartals. And why? Because then my party and its relevance is understood and their communication is complete. We do have you know, union militancy. And unions and trade unions are absolutely essential and for actually for the progress of the society and inclusion, that's essential. But when we use it only for the electoral means, it produces the results opposite. So the political model, and again in Kerala, corporate is a bad word and political parties will reinforce that in the minds of the people. And which corporate has done what harm to our people? What was the situation of this country when the telecom sector was not liberalized? What was the situation of this country when the automobile sector was not liberalized? We have to wait for four years or give for an exchange to get a Chetak or a Vespa scooter. Now, corporate is a bad word. So this is the, but I think we really have to change that political model. We can communicate much more effectively, less disruptively. Still, you will be able to come to power. And again, in the evening, and when we talk about this democratic uh, churn that we see in our country, in our state, it's very, very painful because all of our brighter minds are leaving and our parents, after education, say, don't come back to the state. That is not the situation. And why? Because in the evening, if you watch any of the television, they talk about only negatives. And when you get to hear all these negatives, the youngsters, they have not inspired to stay in any of the cities in Kerala. They don't want to stay in this place. So this is important. And again, up, totally apolitically and 100% politically, I can say, when Shashi Tharoor contested for the National Presidency of Congress, and when he actually came to the state, I just wanted to study and I asked people to let me know what is the general <coughs> thinking of the people. That's the first time people felt really motivated to participate a little bit in politics. And it means that he represents a different political model. And that is what would definitely help. It's all about communicating to the people. I'm not saying our parties are bad or we are far more mature and our, our governance is far more stable. And it's also very important that in a developing nation like ours and a de developing state like Canada, we have to reduce the size of government, improve <laughs> governance. Because Milton Friedman, the Nobel Prize winning economist, he won the, the Nobel Prize for economic freedom and he says government should back off and private sector. As an example, citizen service delivery. If you really look at if you can involve our people in doing that but organized in a private manner, the service quality will be very good. Take the case of passport management by TCS seen in, in the US. It used to be go-go, government-owned, government-operated. But today, it is government-owned, contractor-operated. You make the legislation, the rules, the regulations, everything. But let the, the people who would be more incentivized, motivated to deliver that citizen service. Conflict of interest. But if we don't recognize that, we are fooling ourselves. We'll still remain positive. We'll still campaign for the state. We'll still campaign for the country. But we are fooling ourselves. That should not happen. So changing the political model and the service delivery model, we will be able to unleash the potential and we will have make that quantum leap. And it's absolutely important for us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you.
Ms. Johnson, I think I have to ask you to take a shorter time and uh, then... Yeah, uh, <laughs> don't be so cruel. <laughs> Like at, the, at the very outset, I mentioned that you know uh, that fiscal situation in Kerala is very, very alarming. The persistent fiscal crisis and lack of resources for development is one major problem that we need to overcome. You know that in 2016, our public debt was 1.57 lakh crores, and it is going to touch 4 lakh crores in March 2023. And 67% uh, percent of the public debt incurred in the last 20 years were used for paying salary, pension and debt servicing. In other words, out of every 100 rupees earned by the state, 57% goes for salaries, pensions and remaining for debt servicing. In neighboring Karnataka, it is only 28%. And the funniest thing is, the worst part is that the salaries and pensions benefit only 4 to 5% of the population. So look at the inequality which is being uh, in a created. And I will just, because of paucity of time, I won't uh, talk about other points. And the major thing which we, uh, we need to uh, think about uh, is, you know, like, uh, uh, you see, like Kerala, how much land is available in Kerala? You know, the, the total land extent comes to 38,863 square kilometer. This means only 96 lakh acres. If you did that, the land covered by forests, rivers, lakes, roads, rail, transports, ecologically fragile land, etc., etc., then you know the balance is available, uh, balanced land available for development is only 25 lakh ac uh, acres. You know, do we have a master plan for this? You know, I was chief secretary of the state, and I, when I had to do some kind of uh, flood uh, mitigation efforts in uh, Trivandrum city, I called the engineers and asked them, "Give me the uh, the, the uh, you know uh, the master plan." They said, "There is no such master plan. There is someone, one gentleman sitting as a town planner, chief town planner. What is he doing? What is this department doing all these years? And if we don't have a master plan for 25 lakh acres, then you, what sort of?" Development are we talking about? How is it possible to implement? Sorry, Fox, you know, there are so many things need to say. I will only conclude by saying this. Honorable Minister mentioned about uh, the bureaucrats. You know, see, like, I have spent 36 years in government, out of which one third was spent in Delhi. East or west, north or south. The attitude of the officers, the bureaucrats are the same. You know, if you can, don't move. If it is a must, move slowly. <laughs> if you are pushed, move in a circle. And if you are cornered, appoint a committee. <laughs> this, is, this is the attitude. See, that's why I said a vibrant bureaucracy is very much required. I, I have my own solutions for this, but then time doesn't permit me to say okay. all this. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for your Mr. Honorable Minister, I, I just want to uh, throw an idea at you, you know, I'm here to the last uh, concluding uh, part of the panel discussion before we move on to hear from Dr. Bala. Can we, you know, I'm inspired to, you know, uh, say, the, you know, suddenly this vision, I, I have a moment of epiphany. Uh, can we strive for this vision? Our youngsters come back and tell us this is a vision. We wish to work in Kerala. Or work from Kerala. All right. So one thing, sir, and the binding constraint I often find is uh, the cultural, uh, social cultural my baggage that we have of obstruction to any infrastructure projects. Now it's a societal problem. You know, we, we have seen it. We're seeing it now in Mirindam. We had faced it in when widening of NH earlier. Uh, or, you know, even the airport project, you know, there, there was this uh, problem and also silver line. So, uh, how do we counter the, perhaps, you know, if you have another point, you can address that also, but I would like to also hear your views. How do we, you know, encounter this or proactively address it? Thank you, Ajit. Uh, I am literally moving away from your views. That is, yes, there should be some reconstruction of political activities also. We should recognize the uh, prevailing objective realities of the state. 
But could you see any political parties present in Vidinam? Could you see any political parties present in this Calicut agitation against the plant? No. Not a political parties present is there. Some other organizations are taking the lead of this for this. Then you should not limit it to political parties your criticism. You should limit it to the, these type of organizations and also the society as a whole. That is uh, my opinion with regard to that. And that is a good suggestion by from Mr. Gigi Thompson that appointing uh, some young professionals as in Punjab. But I am inviting your kind attention to the new steps taken by my ministry. We have recruited 1,153 Indians, MBA graduates, BTEC graduates, as Indians for only for this project, one lakh year of federal basis. One Indian for one Panjait. And one for third 20 divisions of municipalities and corporations. And also now we have decided to constitute a special PMU for the implementation of this new industrial policy with experienced IAM graduates uh, to attract more investment. The Indian Sangla Paranu, not 10 to 5, only targets. We have fixed a target for each local bodies by a scientific analysis of the objective realities of their and the advantages, disadvantages. We have decided OLOP, one local body, one product. A very good result by this. Indians. They have shown very good result. Now, digital university level course would do. Do executive MBA board. Ninety percent is circular would do. And two years ago, our course would do. Our course would do. But it would be hard. But now, the course is going to do. Only Kerala to do. I am telling you, India is going to do. Only for education or employment opportunities. Some kind of fear is here. You please go through the social analysis of the new migrants. Which religion? Why to Europe? Why they to their own families? Comprehensive way to know what is the Kerala is the mother of the person. The university is the person. The university is the Your education system is the person. But you know, more than 200 vice chancellors of the country, they are also in the same position. The state act of the country is not the vice chancellor of India. And the qualification of UGC is the qualification of UGC. We have to say that the qualification of UGC is the What is the perception of Kerala? We have to say migration is the question. Yes, we have to address some important issues. We need to know the mindset of the person. Now, it took all the coliform bacteria of the well and good again. No, the Sandosha. Matanje didn't know he planned to end on the love of the good Yoji Puru with the Divanch. Yagar knows the Kalamashi did end a month of the well and good name. Yana did live. But Sarada, about the channel Luna Mandrekana and Levin, that's the one that the Larry Joji in the well and good name. Mandre would in the love of well and good day. Carnot Anti meter with the third and day. Ninggal semua orang mudi, rasmi bayar tu melalui tiada macam tu, tuod bayar tu road madi. Atau tuod ninggal mudi, kami terlagi. Atau dah itu mudi kau dah road terlagi. Ibu bandar mana kerja rumah, menteri semua, menteri semua, perdana menteri semua bandar kerja. Ini mindset tu nama macam tu madil, semua sengketa kerja, rasmi apa tu kerja, semua orang itu turun bayar tu ni kerja tu ni. Kita tu, nama kita turun bayar tu ni jasa tu. Plan tu berani, kalau kunci ada master plan ni kau, mana tu? Itu correct kan? So master plan kau tu nama kita find dia siapa betulnya? Jadi, baru dua puluh bulan. Guru side itu mula investment kita regulation. Depan maru nak kerja. Atas side itu mula siaran sah regulation. Baki nadi kulla sah ada mula irullo. Aduh betulan regulation. Bina awi baki korcce sah ada kodi. Ini naga tu mau kumbu. Ibu buffer zone bondo. Orang orang high court also ini tu buffer zone. Amade high court ni dulu, kunci le. Naga ni jadi buffer zone la. Bukan je yang betulnya. Pudia supreme bodi bidia ni sahijah. Mangkala barat ni dua kilometer naga tu. Apabila kami mahu ikut teriikan dan sila je, kami ke boleh master plan anda kilo. Ia 
ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ദേർ ബട്ട് ഇതെങ്ങനെ ചേഞ്ച് ചേഞ്ച് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഒരു മാസ്റ്റർ പ്ലാൻ വേണം ബട്ട് ചില കൺസ്ട്രക്റ്റീവ് ക്രിറ്റിസിസം നിർബന്ധമായിട്ടും ഉണ്ടാകേണ്ടതുണ്ട് ഇത് പ്രശ്നമാണ് ഇന്ന ഭാഗങ്ങൾ മാറാൻ ട്രേഡ് യൂണിയൻസ് ഉണ്ട് ഞാൻ ഇപ്പോൾ പബ്ലിക് സെക്ടർ ഞങ്ങളെല്ലാം മാസ്റ്റർ പ്ലാൻ ഉണ്ടാക്കി ഞാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞ ദിവസം അവർ വിളിച്ചിരുന്നു നിങ്ങൾ ഇത്രയും കാലം കൊണ്ട് എസ്റ്റക്കറിന് എന്ത് തിരിച്ചു കൊടുത്തു അപ്പോൾ അവർ പറഞ്ഞു ആദ്യമായിട്ടാണ് ഈ ചോദ്യം നമ്മുടെ ബ്യൂറോക്രാറ്റ്സ് പറഞ്ഞു ഞങ്ങൾ ഞങ്ങൾ തന്നെ എടുത്ത് ഈ വർഷം മുന്നൂറ്റി അൻപത് കോടി പല ഇനത്തിൽ കൊടുത്തിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ഞങ്ങൾ ടാർഗറ്റ് ഫിക്സ് ചെയ്യാം നിങ്ങൾ എന്ത് തിരിച്ചു തരണം അപ്പോൾ അങ്ങനെ നമ്മൾ ഫിക്സ് എന്നെ ഞാൻ ഐ ആം വെരി ഹാപ്പി വിത്ത് മൈ ബ്യൂറോക്രസി എൻ്റെ ഓഫീസ് എഴുതി വെരി ആക്റ്റീവ് വെരി പ്രോ ആക്റ്റീവ് അതുകൊണ്ട് ബ്യൂറോക്രസി മൊത്താണെന്ന് പറയില്ല ഞാനൊരു ഇന്ത്യൻസിന് ഐഡിയ വെച്ചപ്പോഴേക്കും ഞാൻ കണ്ടതിന് അപ്പുറത്തേക്ക് അവരത് കൊണ്ടുപോയി അതുകൊണ്ട് എൻ്റെ കൂടെയുള്ള ഐ എസ് ഓഫീസർ വെരി ഡൈനാമിക് വെരി പ്രോ ആക്റ്റീവ് വളരെ വേഗത്തിൽ കാര്യങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യണമെന്ന് താല്പര്യ ടീമാണ് അതുകൊണ്ട് നമ്മൾ ജേണലൈസ് ചെയ്യരുത് ശരണുണ്ടാവും അവരിങ്ങനെ അതിൽ ഇരുന്നുകൊണ്ടേയിരിക്കും എത്ര ഈ പറഞ്ഞ കമ്മിറ്റി ഉണ്ടാക്കുക ഇതെല്ലാം ആ വൈദഗ്ധ്യമുള്ള ആളുകൾ എത്ര കമ്മിറ്റികൾ ഉണ്ടാവും അപ്പം അത് നമ്മൾ മാറ്റാനുണ്ട് ബ്യൂറോക്രസി ഒരു പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട പ്രശ്നമാണ് പക്ഷെ അത് മാറ്റും ഇപ്പോൾ ഇന്നലെ മുഖ്യമന്ത്രി പറഞ്ഞല്ലോ ബ്യൂറോക്രസിയുടെ പ്രശ്നം നമ്മൾ ഇവർ ശ്രീ ജി ജി തോമസിനൊക്കെ ഉള്ള സമയത്താണ് നമ്മൾ ആദ്യമായിട്ട് ഈ മെയിലും ഈ കോമ ഈ ഫൈലിംഗ് ഒക്കെ തുടങ്ങിയത് അപ്പോൾ ഐ എസ് ആർ എല്ലാവരും പുതിയ സെക്കൻഡ് ഒരു പുതിയ ഓഫീസ് ഒരു പി എ വെച്ചു ഈ മെയിലുകളെല്ലാം പ്രിന്റ് എടുത്തിട്ട് ഫയലാക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി അതാണ് നമ്മുടെ സിസ്റ്റം എന്ന് കണ്ടുകൊള്ളണം ഓക്കെ താങ്ക് യു സർ താങ്ക് യു വെരി മച്ച് ഐ എം ഐ ഫൈൻഡ് എ വെരി പോസിറ്റീവ് ഫൈൻഡിങ് ഫ്രം യു ഇൻറ്റേൺസ് ഇൻഡ്യ വർക്ക് കൾച്ചർ നമുക്കത് ഇഫ് യു ക്യാൻ മൈഗ്രേറ്റ് ടു ദ റെസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ബ്യൂറോക്രസി ഐ തിങ്ക് ദാൽ ബി എ ബിഗ് വിൻ ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ദ ഇൻഡസ്ട്രീസ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ് ഉള്ളത് തന്നെ ഉണ്ട് ഏജുണ്ട് ഞങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവരും ഐ ഐ എം എ വിട്ടു ട്രെയിനിങ് പ്രോഗ്രാം അഹമ്മദാബാദിലേക്ക് വിട്ടു ഓൺട്രപ്രണേഴ്സ് ഡെവലപ്മെൻറ്റ് കോഴ്സിന് വിട്ടു എൻ്റെ ഏറ്റവും എൻ്റെ കൂടെ എനിക്ക് പറയാൻ ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടുള്ള ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ് ജിയോളജി ആയിരുന്നു അപ്പോഴും പ്രശ്നം ഉണ്ടല്ലോ ജിയോളജി വിട്ടു ഞങ്ങളിപ്പോൾ പുതിയൊരു പൈലറ്റ് ഡ്രോൺ സംവിധാനം കൊണ്ടുവരാണ് ഒരു പൈലറ്റ് കഴിഞ്ഞു പിന്നെ ഇപ്പോൾ ഡിസംബർ മൂന്ന് ഡ്രോൺ പോയിട്ട് ഒരു കോറി നോക്കിയിട്ട് വന്നു എൻ്റെ സിസ്റ്റത്തിൽ കിട്ടും ഇത്ര ഉണ്ടെന്ന് അടുത്ത വർഷം അതേ ഡ്രോൺ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വേറൊരു ഡ്രോൺ പോകുമ്പോൾ സിസ്റ്റത്തിൽ കിട്ടും എത്ര എടുത്തെന്നുള്ളത് ഇത് ജിയോളജിയും അവർ ട്രെയിനിങ് കഴിഞ്ഞു പുതിയ ബാച്ച് എടുത്ത് സാധാരണ ഇവരെല്ലാം റിക്രൂട്ട് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ സെക്രട്ടറിയേറ്റ് സ്റ്റാഫ് പിറ്റേ ദിവസം പോലെ അവർ ജോലി ചെയ്യാൻ തുടങ്ങും അല്ലേ കറക്റ്റ് പിറ്റേ അവർക്കൊന്നും അറിയില്ല ഞാൻ ഇന്ത്യൻസിനോട് പറഞ്ഞു നിങ്ങൾ ചെല്ലുമ്പോൾ പഞ്ചായത്തിൽ ഇരിക്കാനേ പാടില്ല കാരണം നിങ്ങൾ പെട്ടെന്ന് അവരോടൊപ്പാവും കാരണം നിങ്ങൾ പുറത്ത് നിൽക്കാവൂ ഒരു ആറു മാസം കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് അവരോട് പറഞ്ഞ് നിങ്ങൾ ഒരു ഹെൽപ്പ് ഡെസ്ക് അവിടെ തുടങ്ങണം ഇപ്പൊ ഹെൽപ്പ് ഡെസ്ക് തുടങ്ങി ഇപ്പൊ ജിയോളജി ഞങ്ങൾ നൂറ്റി അമ്പത് പേരെടുത്തു എല്ലാവരെയും ഒരു മാസം ട്രെയിനിങ് ആണ് എന്നിട്ട് ഞങ്ങൾ ഒരു ഫീൽഡിലേക്ക് വിടുന്നു Good to everybody Ajit uh, very happy to see you there uh, to all of you who don't know Ajit and me uh, we are classmates uh, we are classmates uh, from 5th to 10th grade and i met Ajit uh, after what 35 40 years recently and uh, that's what got me into this trouble of uh, uh, of being put into this but uh, but a very fascinating discussion and excellent presentation by my colleague Thro and a very fascinating discussion uh, breaking both uh, getting into both traditional grounds but also breaking new grounds and uh, there is always something to learn from these discussions right and so uh, given the time constraints i'm not going to add a lot more uh, i want to share that as a keralaite who has lived abroad for a long length of time and someone who has worked in multiple countries uh, i have worked in some 25 plus countries over the years uh, I started engaging with the government of Kerala and the society at large in Kerala since 2018 after the floods. Uh, I was appointed the state coordinator of uh, a very special uh, relationship between the World Bank and Kerala. It was the first state partnership between the bank and the state in India, uh, the World Bank Kerala state partnership. So for about 4 years uh, I was the state coordinator and through that program uh, The program was founded on the idea of enhancing resilience of the state
uh, the government, first and foremost. I have not encountered, uh, and I, would, I can fairly safely speak for my colleagues, uh, so I have not encountered uh, huge hurdles in getting things done in Kerala. And that might come as a surprise to you. Uh, I have not encountered uh, enormous problems with the bureaucracy in Kerala. There are traditional set of problems and constraints that I have faced in Kerala, as much as I have faced in uh, Indonesia or uh, or Egypt or Kenya or any of these places, right? So I have not found a constraint, a binding constraint in my engagement with the government. Nor have I found a binding constraint uh, in my engagement with the civil society and the industry at large. Uh, our program is extraordinarily uh, vast in scope. Uh, many of the things that we are doing with the government and uh, with the industry and society are going to roll out over a period of time. So this is a program that is different in the sense that it, it focuses much less on investments, hard investments, although through World Bank engagement and with the participation of other partner agencies like the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, the Germans, the French, etc. We've been able to bring about $1.2 billion to Kerala and that investment is very significant for Kerala. Nevertheless, the big uh, uh, positive I, I expect to happen see from this engagement is really institutional change in Kerala. Uh, one of the things I was most heartened to uh, know recently that, is that Kerala has embarked upon a land survey. About three and a half years back, I remember going and meeting the Chief Minister with one of the foremost land management, land administration experts in the world. Somebody who had sort of changed the land administration, created new land administration systems uh, from ground up uh, in several Eastern European countries uh, 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 in the post-Soviet era. And we made this presentation to the Chief Minister. It was a very difficult topic. Land is a very difficult topic. Uh, world Bank has not invested, put its money into supporting this. But the ideas and the policy vision that uh, was shared, and, uh, and some of that is starting to sort of uh, happen. Uh, so I, I just wanted to say this as an introduction. And I don't think it is with this government. If, the, if, uh, if an opposition party came to power, I have engaged with Kerala in the past, uh, in the, uh, the road project, under the local government project. I have found Kerala to be a very receptive place to work, by and large. Uh, we do face challenges, just like we face in other countries, but I have found by and large evidence. The reason why I am saying this is not to paint some kind of rosy, uh, platonic picture, uh, but, to, but to highlight that I am an optimist on Kerala. I believe in Kerala, not only as a Kerala, but as someone who has worked in many countries across the world. Uh, I am an optimist on Kerala, I am an optimist that good things can and will continue to happen in Kerala. We just need to keep the course. And we need to be continuously sort of reinventing ourselves as a society. People talk about America as an incredible society, and I've lived in the United States for many years now. Uh, what makes America remarkable is the idea that it can keep reinventing itself as a society. Nothing is a problem for America in this way. Everything is a challenge. Uh, and that could be a social challenge, that could be a technology challenge. Uh, but America keeps reinventing itself. And I think Kerala has the quality. Kerala needs to inculcate that more deep and that more. So those are some general thoughts I wanted to share with you. But uh, more importantly, from a technical perspective, I would pose the question to my colleague Drew, as well as all of you sitting there, uh, the question that is Kerala facing some kind of a middle-income country trap? Uh, I don't know if you may, you may have heard this term, middle-income trap, a term uh, that is used to describe economies that grow very fast in their early stages, but lose their momentum after reaching a certain income threshold. Kerala may not fit the traditional model of a middle income trap, but some of the attributes uh, of a middle income trap uh, seems to be afflicting Kerala. And this term has been used in the past to describe economies like Brazil, South Africa, and several East Asian tiger economies. Right? So what defines a middle income uh, trap? Right, slower growth, especially in secondary sectors, rising or higher wages, low investments, especially in high value add sectors, low productivity, lack of economic and industrial diversification, and aging population. Uh, and is, is something for us as, uh, as, uh, as citizens of Kerala, as uh, a state, as government, to think, is Kerala's economy getting stalled due to some of these factors? And how can Kerala then get out of that? Uh, possible middle income trap. Uh, my colleague Dhruv highlighted uh, 
four factors. I would emphasize the three eyes of those four factors, three ingredients, uh, investments, innovation, and institutions. And we need to work on all of those three. In each of these areas, innovation, investment, and institutions, we need to maximize on our comparative advantages and continue to build on our own positions. And those are all well described already. We've talked about uh, our huge uh, human capital uh, endowment. We've talked about our excellent social infrastructure. Those are things where we have comparative advantages. We need to continue to build on those old positions, right? But we also need to address those binding constraints. And not every constraint is a binding constraint. Uh, the Honorable Minister talked about uh, an industrial policy that is being formulated. Uh, someone had actually shared with me. I would, I would submit that policy is not is not general. I'm not an industry policy specialist, but what I have seen of industry policies are generally they are not like clever knives, like the, those big knives. They are like surgeon scalpels, right? They have to be precise. They have to be extremely targeted to understand what are the binding constraints in that supply chain, where do you want to intervene, and how do you want to intervene. And that a lot of that intervention may not be with the government. A lot of that intervention may be with civil society, with industries, with uh, with external factors, right? So going with precision, a scalpel knife, a surgeon scalpel uh, to address the, those kind of constraints. So, so we need to both build on our comparative advantages, but as well as address our binding constraints. Let me submit a few thoughts uh, as a Keralite, but also as someone who has worked with uh, the government and engaged with the society in the last few years. We all talk about uh, uh, external investments, right? Uh, to my mind, who are our champion investors? To my mind, our champion investors are those who are already in Kerala, those, who, those many of you who are already in that room from Kerala and are associated with Kerala. If you do well and if you thrive, you not only add investments and create jobs, but you also become the greatest ambassadors for the state to attract external investors. The Honorable Minister talked about at the beginning putting a good word for Kerala. I think that's something to, for all of us to consider. Uh, but for the government to also think that these are your biggest allies, these investors, these local investors, these uh, uh, Kerala's diaspora. We are, uh, those, are, those are your biggest assets and to address uh, uh, their concerns, to have a dialogue with them on a systematic basis. And that poses the question, are there the right kind of forums to engage between the civil society, the government and the industry? Uh, if there are the good forums, are there ways to sort of take uh, that engagement into action? Do we have the institutional mechanisms to do that? So that's something I want to leave a thought with. So this today's session is very good, but is there a way to take this forward in a systematic way? Is there a way to sort of translate this into action? That's that's something I want to I want to sort of leave you with. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, let's give him a big hand. Yeah, please come No, no, no I, I'm actually wrapping up. Second, I want to say uh, there are a few binding constraints uh, that you want to think about. One, fixed land. Land-related constraints are uh, essential to address. Uh, two, fixed higher education. Uh, there was a question posed, how do we attract talent? Uh, I know from the case of the United States that, uh, how does the United States attract the best talent in the world? It's not its investment policy, it's really its universities, right? People go to study in the United States and stay back in the United States. Uh, so universities are attracting top talent, universities are retaining top talent, universities are becoming the incubators for innovation, for thinking, new thinking, inclusiveness, all of those places. Can we work on our institutions, the higher education institutions to do that? Three, uh, fix our cities, especially our urban infrastructure and services. Growth is uh, happens only in, in, in selected places. We somehow have a, uh, an idea that we can spread growth around. Growth doesn't get spread around. Growth is in, happens in growth poles, in cities, primarily in urban areas. While services and uh, and social distribution can be equitable, right? A social, uh, uh, while growth itself is, uh, happens in cities. So fixing our cities, especially infrastructure and services in cities is super important. Those are the three things that you can fix, land, higher education and cities. Those are fairly straightforward things for, for the government and for the, uh, for the uh, civil society. To do. Three uh, cross-cutting things I want to leave you as a thought. One, uh, Rethink the role of rethinking the role of the state and the society on a continual basis, right? So, uh, not getting trapped in the history, uh, learning from the history, but continually re uh, renewing ourselves. To think what is the role of the state 
what is the role of the society and how does this dynamic continually sort of reinvent itself, right? And I, I've seen very hopeful signs in Kerala over the last four years during my engagement. But that is something we need to continually think. What is the role of government in economy? What is the role of uh, uh, industry in, uh, in creating jobs? All of those important questions are things that we need to pose ourselves, to ourselves as Keralaites, right? And then finally, uh, I would leave one thought with the minister. Uh, you talked about uh, industrial policy. I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very important thing. Similarly, we need uh, uh, policies in other areas, whether it's on infrastructure, land, uh, uh, other areas. Uh, and very importantly, policy integration horizontally, right? Between industrial policy, land policy, infrastructure policy, etc. That work, uh, horizontal integration is important. And moreover, most importantly, policy is 15%. Uh, action on the ground is 85%, right? So really shifting from policy to action, and I'm seeing that already happening in this uh, uh, 100,000 uh, MSME uh, venture, but really shifting from policy to action and then continuously building those evidence-based loops whereby policy action can sort of come back to uh, policy and sort of create new uh, opportunities. I think that's something for, for, for the government to do. Let me stop here and happy to answer any questions. Thank you, thank you, Bala. Thank you very much. I think now we are running out, run out of time, uh, so we'll have a quick sum up. Sorry that you know I think we, there's, uh, we don't uh, there's no room for Q and A now. So we just have a quick sum up from Rajesh Nair and then we conclude. Uh, you know we don't have time for a sum up. I have a presentation which is largely the summary of what we are you know what we have collected. Um, I'll you know, pass on the presentation to the office. And yeah, over to you. Thank you very much. That was one refreshing session. We would like to thank our panelists. We request you to accept a gift. Also for clearing the air, giving us some staggering numbers that is really hopeful for the state. Thank you, Sri Gigi Thompson, from giving a spin to the... I request the moderator to present. She did. And, you know, and Bala, especially for you staying awake and joining us in your very late wee hours, we are, we are really indebted to you. I, I owe you one. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, the moderators, for enthusiastically navigating through the conversation.